Hi everybody, it's time for Tim's Vital Confessions. I'm Tim Durling. Thank you for watching this episode. This one is uh, unique. It's a, well, it's a record review episode or an album review episode, which is not unique. I've done plenty of those. What's interesting about these two is that there are two completely different releases by two completely different bands, but they both have the same title. Uh, I happen to like both, so I thought I'd review them together. Uh, one's been out for a few months now. One's only been out a very, very short amount of time, so I'm going to start with the one that came out first. So uh, four years ago, Alice Cooper came out with a project called Hollywood Vampires. Uh, Matt and I dedicated a, an older episode to that. If you want to type in Tim's Vinyl Confessions, either Alice Cooper or Hollywood Vampires will bring it up. And that album was consisted of a lot of covers. Uh, as a matter of fact, the standard edition only had two original songs on it. So we reviewed that album. And honestly, I thought that that was going to be a one-off, but it turns out that uh, the sort of the main three of Alice Cooper, Joe Perry from Aerosmith, and Johnny Depp uh, did another album, and it came out earlier this year, and it's called Rise. Kind of a cool gold cover here to this character. Like I said, this one's been out for a few months now, and it's on EAR Music. That's the same label that uh, Deep Purple's on now, and I think a couple of the more recent Europe albums are on. Now, first thing I want to get out of the way is, is a complaint of mine. I got thinking about this when I was listening to, to this album, thinking about the previous album. Because like I said, I've got the standard edition of the first Hollywood Vampires album on CD. And it's the first one that came out, and like I said, it only has two original songs on it. The rest are all covers. So it's really not... Uh, it's a project more than it is an album. I'm not saying it's not well done and it's not fun to listen to, but not a lot of substance there, because like I said, they're covers, and a lot of times they're really well-known covers. But that's that's back on that review episode. And then about, I don't know, less than a year later, they came out with another edition of it, which I think had um, two or three more original songs on it. And this is what irritates me. That really irritates me, because I don't understand why they don't come out with the deluxe version first and have it only out for a limited time. Because who's going to buy this? Pop music fans? No. The, the diehard fans are going to be the first to buy it. So give them the exclusive one. And then if a casual person hears one of the songs somewhere and thinks they'll check it out, well, then they get the standard version. I think they're doing it in the wrong order, but that's just my opinion. Let's talk about this album, Rise. Um, at first listen, first couple listens, actually, it's way, way, way better than the first album, but first of all, it's easy for it to be way better because there's only, I believe, three covers on here. There's, there's a, it's got 16 tracks on it, but some of them are like little interlude songs, but there's a lot more to talk about on here. There's a lot more original songs. And the covers, well, with one exception, aren't that well known, really. They cover David Bowie's Heroes, which a ton of people have done. Uh, that's actually one of the ones that Johnny Depp sings. They also do um, You Can't Put Your Arms Around a Memory, which is a Johnny Thunder song. Joe Perry sings that one. I think it's the only one Joe sings. And then they do, they cover a song by the Jim Carroll band called People Who Died. Um, anyway, we'll get into that. So here's the CD itself. I didn't know... Honestly, I didn't know how excited I would be over this, which is why I didn't buy the album right away, but CD booklet. All the lyrics, and it breaks down who sings what, who plays on what. There's the main three guys right there. So... I gotta be honest with you, the, like I've said this before, um, these sort of uh, side project things where someone from a, one band and somebody from another band, like I'll be, I, I usually don't care about those things. I'd much rather hear, um, you know, if Joe Perry's gonna do something, I'd rather hear a new Aerosmith album, honestly. Um, you know, I was way more excited about Alice's last album, Paranormal, than I was about the Hollywood Vampires album. I thought Paranormal was fantastic. Johnny Depp, well, I'd rather see another Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but no, I'm kidding. But um, this is actually a good solid album, and the best songs on here, I think, could have been easily just on an Alice Cooper album. Uh, specifically, 
the, towards the end of the album, I find that there's three songs right in a row that are just complete and total Alice songs. The first one's called Mr. Spider. And that might be a little bit obvious, but that is a total Alice Cooper song. That's a total Welcome to My Nightmare or, or um, any number of his albums. It just fits so perfectly. We Gotta Rise, I guess, is the quasi-title track. That's sort of a sequel to Elected. Um, and if you know anything about Alice Cooper, I shouldn't have to explain that any further. And People Who Died, the Jim Carroll cover. That sounds totally like something Alice would have done around the same period that that song originally came out, actually, in 1981. It sounds like something that would have come off plus the fashion or Special Forces, and I really like it. Uh, there's a fun song on here called Welcome to Bushwhackers, which, you know, Alice is in a character. Actually has a spoken introduction from John Waters, which I believe is the filmmaker, and guitar from Jeff Beck. Um, you know, the, Johnny Depp's a decent enough singer. He's got a lot of, I mean, it's, it makes sense. He sang Heroes. He's got a lot of uh, Bowie affectations to his voice. But, um, oh yeah, the, the last song on here is an interesting one. What I'll call it a song. It's like a spoken word piece that each of them takes a line, and it's called Congratulations. It's uh, interesting. Uh, I like it. Um, it's, I don't know if it's creepy or inspiring. You'd have to listen to it. I Want My Now is another one that sounds like a like an Alice song. Uh, Get From Around Me is a fun rock and roll song. Like, this is a good album. Uh, and it, it's, it's probably a grower. I really, really, really like Paranormal. It kills me that Alice is, you know, the stuff he's done in this in this century has not caught on. Part of, part, part of that is because it's been on smaller labels. But, uh, but this is good, you know, and... Yeah, I guess it's turning into more or less a band project. I hope the next thing that comes out from Alice is an Alice album, but this is pretty good. So that's my two cents about the latest Hollywood Vampires album, Rise. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit and, um, number one, talk about why I picked this other album and then go against something I already said. So I already said I didn't really care too much about solo projects or... Uh, side projects from, from guys and bands. I'd rather hear the bands themselves do new music. But there are exceptions, of course, and one of those exceptions for me is Tom Kiefer, uh, lead singer, lead guitar player, writer of Cinderella. Um, one of my favorite bands from the, the late 80s. Uh, Night Songs and Long Cold Winter are still two of my all-time favorite albums. And um, there's no new music coming out of them. Their last new album was 25 years ago, still climbing. You know, it, I hate the fact that I, they recorded an album for Portrait Sony and a red tape resulted in it being shelved. And I always thought Cinderella had one more good album in them. But in 2013, Tom Kiefer put out his first, very first solo album called The Way Life Goes. And it was okay. Um, the rocking songs on there could have fit on any one of the Cinderella albums. It had a little bit of a country flavor to some of the songs, which is not my cup of tea. The Tom Kiefer's back with his, which is only his second solo album, while well, this one's credited to the Tom Kiefer band. Why am I talking about Tom Kiefer after Hollywood Vampires? Because this two al this album is also called Rise. They both have the exact same title. I'm sure it's a coincidence and it's just one word and it's far from an original, but I just thought it was interesting enough to warrant its episode. So yeah, this one hasn't been out for too long. And this, uh, okay, so let me do a comparison for you Cinderella fans out there. I know there's a lot of Cinderella fans out there. If his first solo album, The Way Life Goes, is Heartbreak Station, this one's Night Songs or Long Cold Winter, as far as heaviness. I mean, you know, Tom Keeper was never a metal guy, but this is a lot more rock-oriented. Like, he could have slapped a Cinderella logo on this, and it would have been absolutely fine. I'm guessing there's a lot of reasons why it's not, um... Funny thing about Cinderella, like as I'm filming this, it was just recently saw Brett Michaels in concert and Eric Brittingham was his bass player, who's Cinderella's bass player. No mention of any of the other Cinderella people on here, but this is a rocking album. There's a couple of like acoustic or piano based songs, but for the most part, this is a solid rocking album from start to finish. It's on a small label, it's on Cleopatra Records, but the album, to me, it has a pretty decent production sound. It doesn't sound cheaply made. Let's take a look at the inner booklet here. So it's got the lyrics to all the songs. He co-wrote all the songs with his wife, Savannah, who's also a member of his band. Um, there you go. There's the full Tom Kiefer band. Tom doesn't look any different than he did in the Cinderella days. I don't really know any of the names of 
the people in this band, I'll list them off. So there's so Tom Kiefer, obviously, Savannah Kiefer, Kiefer on vocals, percussion, piano, Tony Higby, also on lead and rhythm guitars, Billy Mercer on bass, Kendra Chantal on vocals and percussion, Jared Pope on drums, and Corey Myers on keyboards and vocals. Um, don't recognize any of those names. Uh, some credits there. So uh, as far as the songs on here go, the first single, I guess, the video from it, it's called The Death of Me, and uh, it's a pretty interesting video. kind of goes through some of the stuff he's been through, including um, all the surgeries he's had done on his throat. And if you know Tom Kiefer, he's got that raspy voice, a little bit like a little bit like Brian Johnson from ACDC, but a lot more tuneful, I think. The Death of Me is a really good song. He's got that voice back. I don't know how he does it at his age, but he's, 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 that's the voice you hear on this album. Uh, there's a cool song on here called Hype, which basically talks about, you know, real music as opposed to. Um, all Amped Up is a good one. Touching the Divine is a good one. It's really all good. If you like Cinderella... Uh, like, if you like Cinderella, especially the first two albums, although I can't forget Still Climbing, because that's an awesome album, but if you like the heavier side of Cinderella, you might not like his first al album, The Way Life Goes. You'll probably like this one. This one might get you back. Um, and like I said, if you're like me, and you're a little weird in that you don't pay any attention to solo projects, this is worth making an exception for, because this is the closest thing that we're going to get to a new Cinderella album. Like I said, it's pretty much a Cinderella album in all but name. Because, I mean, Tom sang all the songs in Cinderella. He wrote them all. He played most of the lead guitar on them. I mean, it was, it's, you know, his baby. So, I highly recommend that album. Uh, of the two, I'd say I like, I, I, this is my favorite. They're both pretty good. So, whether you choose Rise or Rise, there's my two cents about the new Hollywood Vampires and the new Tom Kiefer Band album. Thanks for watching Tim's Wild Confessions.